Hey everyone, Josh here, and today we're going to do a quick tour of this 2017 Toyota Sienna. So before we jump into the tour, real quick, I just want to mention that there will be product links down in the description. I'll try to post links to a bunch of the stuff that you're going to see throughout this tour. Also, for any and all questions van build related, be sure to check out my website, briarwoodvans.com. This one's gonna be pretty short and sweet. We'll start on the outside, talk about a couple things that the owner had done to the van, and then we'll pop the doors open and I'll show you what I did to the van. So now I'll jump behind the camera and we'll get started. So you'll have to bear with me here a little bit. I'm dealing with some harsh lighting, but if you can't tell, the van actually has a lift installed. Now, I don't remember the exact height that the van was raised, but they also added some more all-terrain tires. The Sienna is actually all-wheel drive, and I actually get asked about doing camper van conversions in this van all the time. So it was actually kind of cool to be able to see one firsthand. The last little addition that the owner made was adding this shower up here on these crossbars. I'll try to have a link down in the description to this exact unit, but you can see it uses what looks like a garden hose connector, um, and I believe it's pressurized. And then because it's black, it can actually get heated up when it's in direct sun, so you can have kind of a solar shower uh, setup mounted on top of the van. So that's it for the outside. Now I'll pop the doors open and we can go over the inside. Starting at the back here, you can see that all the rear seats are removed so that we could install this floor. Right away, you're gonna see that there is this black rubber utility flooring used throughout this, this build. And then everything is wrapped in aluminum trim to try to protect those edges. The stuff's pretty durable. It's like a plastic rubber type of material. And then it just interlocks and clicks together. The seats at the very back of the van actually fold flat into the floor of the van. And so because of that cavity, I was actually able to install a really large storage bin. Now the cool thing about this lid to the storage bin is that it actually doubles as a backrest. I'll set the camera up on a tripod real quick and show you how that gets set up. So setting this thing up in the backrest position is pretty painless. Just pop the legs out and they just rest on a cleat right here. And that's what supports this from tipping down. Now because I know I'll get the question, I just want to show that you can set this floor into that backrest position from the inside of the van. You can just pop those legs open, rest them on that cleat, and you're good to go. Now the satisfying thing about this uh, little setup is that once in a while gravity works in your favor. When you push this lid forward, the legs swing to the bottom of the panel, and then there's some Velcro that holds them in place. Making our way towards the front of the van, the Sienna actually has some heaters or vents in the floor, and I didn't want to bury those under the floor that I installed. So I added these little vents here and here to allow that, whether it's heat or air, to discharge. Now we can go up there and cover what's going on up at the front of the van. So it's pretty hard to miss the Bright Horns Jackery sitting here, but this is actually going to be the power station used for this little conversion van. Now the original plan for this Jackery was to try to have it stored in that storage bin, but because of the height of this particular model, we would have had to raise this flooring a little bit higher than we wanted. So it will just kind of, I don't know, float around back here. It's pretty easy to move around. For charging options, there is actually a 12 volt outlet up there. Um, I don't know if it's too easy to see, but just below that USB cable that's plugged in. And then there's also a 12 volt outlet back there. So you have a couple different places that you could charge this while you're driving down the road. And then running off of that Jackery is actually this little Dometic center console fridge, but it's mounted this way just so that it's a little easier to access from the back of the van. You could easily spin it around. It's sitting in a little tray right here uh, and it's pretty painless to pull the fridge out and spin this tray around so that you can have the, there's a little notch that was made so that the power cable doesn't bump the lip here. 
And to power this thing, it just uses a little 12 volt accessory plug, which there's one on the Jackery, as well as like I just mentioned, there is one up there. So if you're driving, you can easily run this off of your car battery. And then when you shut the van off and don't want to use your car battery, you can just plug it into the Jackery. If you are interested in either of these items, again, I'll have links down in the description to the make and model of this little fridge, as well as this Jackery. Well, I think that's gonna do it for this little tour. Like I said, this one's kind of short and sweet. I believe the owner of the van is kind of going to use it and continue building it out as they figure out what works and what doesn't. But for the time being, they've got a solid platform to start on with some additional storage. If I missed anything or you have any questions, definitely leave a comment and I'll try to get back to as many people as I can. And again, be sure to check out my website, briarwoodvans.com for any and all questions van build related. There's a bunch of info on there that may answer one of your questions. Thanks so much for taking the time to check this thing out with me and I'll see you in the next one.